How about now? Is that a little better? Is that too loud? Is it pegging out? And yeah, what's that background? I've got some music playing in the background from SoundCloud, so <clears throat> I don't know how loud that is. I don't know why. For some reason OBS took out my audio not coming from my standard stuff, so. Ah. Well, that'll be better if I can talk. So I was saying, yeah. I said, I started getting a little worried when I got in here and nobody was here. Hello, RD. Welcome to my stream, or better known as, you'll get to watch me change colors probably 15 times. Depends on how far I go with this. I'm, I think I'm going to kind of cheat it a little bit, because <clears throat> it's just a ridiculous amount of colors if I go through all of them. Yeah, sorry about that sound. I don't know what happened. Uh, OBS obviously, you know, I didn't do anything. It just like deleted a source. <clears throat> so I just added the one off my Logitech webcam real quick. I'll get that fixed and sorted out a little bit better after after the stream. How is everybody doing today? I think I'm going to save this color. I'm going to need it again, I'm sure. Put that in a box. In a little cup. Now I got to mix the color up. Don't even know what color it is right now. Trying to see this color here. Maybe I'll, yeah, work on that bottom section first. Colette, how are you today? I am doing okay. Doing okay. Okay, looks like I gotta make some kind of really ugly green. Gotta be careful because I have a tendency to 
I got my tablet open and for zooming in purposes and I start looking at the color on the tablet. And I will tell you guys, the color on your tablet and the color on your photo printout will be two different things. So you gotta pick one and stick with it. And I don't always do that, so I screw up. It's going to be my biggest challenge on something like this is trying to keep the colors in within reason. Alright, so I've got a little, uh, let me try that. I don't need a lot of color, or not a, need a lot of mixing, so sometimes you can go too far pretty quickly. So that background music's not annoying anybody? It's not exactly great music, it's, you know, can't just put any music on here. Y'all know that. Y'all wonder what I'm doing there. It's, I'm going to spray out that color so I just have barely any left in the cup. Because I'm mixing in the cup instead of in a separate container. And I would have to make a lot of it if I wanted to mix with a full drop of my... color is killing saturation. Now poor connections suck, I know. But I'm glad you're, you're enjoying my videos. Should be a little cleaner video this time. Um, I've got... Uh, did a little upgrade on the program I'm using to run off my camera. And it's allowing me to stream at 1080p. So my main screen my main piece even though it's I know over the stream it gets you know diluted down but I'm putting a higher quality picture to you know to that where was I at lost my Got to be a little bit darker. Pick up just a tiny little bit of red. Let's see how that lands. So what's everybody doing? What's everybody working on? Anybody got anything fun going on? 
anything fun art related or even unart related for all I care. Music's not sounds good. Music's or er, video's good. Music's not too bad, so that means I should probably cut that video back a little bit. Sound music down a little bit. Ooh. Sorry about that taking a bit of time and always mixing the colors and just about mixing up a lot of color cuts into that time a whole lot. Y'all see me start putting my fingers and stuff and like pointing with my fingers. It's because I don't make a I don't get everything in my reference when I lay it down and I start to uh, so while I'm working, y'all will see me looking at my picture. And I'll be sketching kind of as I go. Which is not, maybe not the best way to do it. But for me it works out okay. I mean, I, I could freehand a lot of stuff, so... Yeah, I mean, if you're going to airbrush realism, you're going to be mixing color. And then when you got something like this, I mean, this has got a ridiculous amount of stuff in it. Just that color a little bit, I'm not real thrilled with it. I want it to be a little muddier than this. That with spraying lights almost looking like a lime screen. stuff put in here. It's funny because I told Allie the other day, you know, the bad thing about a live stream is, for me, is that I work a little bit, a lot faster when I'm not live streaming. And, that, and I told her part of the reason isn't just that I'm talking and stuff, but part of it is when I'm painting, you know, I'm not afraid to take, make choices that, and take risks and stuff at times. But when I'm on a live stream, I start second guessing stuff. I don't want to mess up in front of everybody, and I don't know why that should much matter, but, um, you know, it really shouldn't. I guess that's the same. Well, I do two things. One, I, I tend to start to be more cautious, but then other times I start trying to rush through stuff so that something's happening. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? 
Yeah. You know, and that's not any place I need to be is rushing through stuff. And that's, yeah, that's something I imagine I'll get over more and more and not worry about it. And if stuff screws up, just be like, whatever. Y'all see me screw up, at least you know that, you know, that's, that's life. But I do tend to, a lot of times when I'm painting offline, I'll take a lot of chances and stuff and try new things. And sometimes it's like, that's awesome. And sometimes it's like, well, that didn't go right. But, you know, sometimes I learned something really cool. I mean, a lot of stuff I learned was because I took chances. If I hadn't taken chances, I wouldn't be where this far along in my ability yet. I am doing okay, man. Doing okay. Now, how did that get to be? We're starting to muddy up on you. That's all right. It's that weirdest. Hey, baby, how you doing? See, you're hard at work over there. Saving lives. Kicking butt, taking names. Allie Cadaver is my wife, if y'all didn't know. Some of y'all probably did, because you knew some of y'all would have known my wife's name was Allie. I'm hoping we can get several viewers in here today and get stuff going on and get a little bit of action going in the chat. For uh, some of my viewers that are interested in getting into more automotive style graphics and stuff like that my buddy Jake's in here and that's uh, brush strokes over there y'all might want to pop in and even if you're not interested in it y'all pop into Jake's channel if y'all get a chance and uh, you know he's getting started on YouTube and man I'm telling y'all it is so hard to get a following on YouTube that he could use a little bit of help um, getting his name out there, so y'all could do me a huge favor. Pop over to Brushstroke's place and, you know, pop in, check a video two of his out, and say hello. Well, Neil, your first mistake was listening to Google. What's up? Hey, Scott, how you doing today? Now, some of y'all people come in here and you'll use different names and names I know you by. So, if uh, I know you by another name, make sure to let me know who you are. Yeah, jump into Facebook and reshare would be awesome. I'd love to get, you know, I mean, I don't expect a whole lot. I mean, airbrushing channels just don't get that many people on a live stream. But, uh, I'd be stoked if I had 15, 20 people in here at one time. Plus, you know, you guys could talk, all that good stuff. I mean, I'll pay attention to the chat. If I get lost, you know, I get lost. Jake's YouTube channel is called Brushstrokes, and I think he's in here as Brushstrokes. So, yeah. So if you look over at the guy called Brushstrokes in here, I 
think he's in here. He may have left. He'll pop back in if he did. Jake sometimes pops in and out. But yeah, if uh, yeah, he's been a supporter of mine for a while, ever since he uh, found me. And um, he actually found me through another artist who found me through Neil over here, Pigment Splatter. And Jake's been following me ever since. But yeah, I'd be, you know, I mean, I, I'd love to have more views myself, but I mean, when you're in that, you know, don't have a couple hundred subscribers, it's a really, really tough time on YouTube because the way YouTube works, the more views you get, the more they start sharing your stuff. And it's brutal, man, I'm telling you. It don't, you can work hard, you can work as hard as you want to get your name out there, but until you get, you know, a few hundred viewers going on, you ain't getting nowhere. What's up, Nick? How we doing today, brother? Nick is another fantastic artist. Been knowing Nick for, I don't even know, some long time. yeah when you get a chance just pop in there give them a couple thumbs up you know say hello even if even if you're not into the spray gun and stuff and all that you know it'd be interesting pop in and see him and uh you know you might discover something you really enjoy he's got some reviews on some spray guns which is cool because that's something i'd like to get into but i just don't have you know the resources to get into it at the moment Telling some porkers, huh? I guess Nick doesn't figure he's... In case y'all are wondering, I'm working with some, um, you know, I'm working with uh, Transparent right now so that I don't completely obliterate the work I put in previously. And so while I'm doing a little bit of uh, texturizing and stuff, I am also counting on my previous layers to do some work for me. I'm going to come back and do a little bit of racing and stuff in a second. And this color probably one of the weirdest colors I've ever had to mix because when I spray it in some places it starts to appear green and when I spray it in other places it appears another color and I just ran out of that color which means I'm gonna have to mess with it again and that's gonna suck well I will take that opportunity Most of my textures to this point have been freehanded. I will take this opportunity, since the paint ran out, to start pulling out a little bit. It's going to take some layers to do what I want to do with this one. And we're not even, that's not even close to its darkest point yet, so 
and so I got a little bit more work to do. Alrighty, you take care of yourself. Catch you on the next go around, I reckon. Brush strokes with a Z, all one word. I guess he's not in here. You could also should be able to find it under my subscriptions. Should be listed under my subscriptions. I'm positive I'm subscribed to his channel. Y'all don't kill me for getting these highlights and stuff in the wrong spot because, as I said, I didn't, I don't mark them out. I'm just looking at my picture and replicating where I think they should go. Still more color goes on top, so they're not really going to pop way out yet. Plus, the cut, the paper I'm using is not white paper, so it'll be lacking just a little bit. Yep, one word with a Z. That's looking on screen right now. Still got a long ways to go though. While I got my racer out, I might as well start. Establishing some of those darks, get a good look. Yeah, it should be. Um, now that I got my iPhone back for a camera, I got one of them, and uh, I've got it streaming, running over Wi Fi, sending it over to my computer. But it sends it at 1080p, so it should be a little nicer. Even though I know it gets shrunk, the image gets shrunk, because I don't remember what I'm stream setting to YouTube. I hope at least 720p, but I know YouTube, you know, limits that. 
I've got it set to stream at 1080p, but that doesn't mean YouTube will always let you. YouTube resample stuff. I do not really have a preferred substrate, asking that question. Um, I paint on a lot of stuff. Right now I'm painting on Terra Slate. I paint a lot of stuff on canvas. I paint a lot of stuff on all sorts of different things. And I don't know that I have an actual preference. It just I, My preferences are based upon what I'm particular I'm doing at this at the time. Cool, showing it 1080p. Hey Todd, how we doing today? So yeah, so if YouTube's letting me stream at 1080p 60, I think. If they let me stream at 1080p 60, you figure that's cut the main section of the screen. This you know, here to here is probably like a 720p image. So that's that that'd be decent. blue background color is a bit off so what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm going to take some masking mask off my entire when I get done I'll, I'll mask this thing off so I'm not worried about any minor overspray on this because I'm going to mask it off and then once I mask it off I'll come back in and do a little more work clean up all the edges when I redo that blue. But yeah, I'm trying to play around a little bit. I mean, you know, I said I haven't taken streaming serious, the streaming part of things seriously yet. I'm just kind of going through, playing with different times of day, find out what works best for everybody. Find out what's, you know, I mean the best. I mean, I'll still do it a couple of different times so I'll probably switch it up and ultimately my goal is 
to be in here with a pre-planned live stream once a week that I'm at least once a week live streaming so people get a plenty of chances to ask questions um, then I'm gonna plan on doing like some quicker paintings so they all want to all be this detailed I'm gonna do some more stylized art and stuff like that again <clears throat> yeah it's, you know I mean that's a tough thing I mean you guys are my overseas people are so much different like a lot of my American viewers they're not even home from work I mean so my American viewers are off at work and you know it's getting late for my European viewers so but I thought I would try this time because I knew that some of my European viewers could make this where I know most of them can't make an 8 p.m. live stream, which seems to be the favorite time for American viewers. It's about an 8 p.m. live stream, um, my time. But that's, you know, that's five hours from now that put you guys up. crazy you had to get up crazy early in the morning catch a live stream Todd, I got you, brother. Hey, man. You hang in. I mean, that's all I can really say. I mean, man, y'all y'all don't know. I mean, it's kind of how I became doing art full-time. And actually, what brought me back to art is uh, I got hurt. I had to leave work and leave my full-time, my lifelong career. And I got real depressed and I quit painting. I was already painting before then. I quit painting. Quit doing everything for a while. About um, two and a half years ago. Still out of work. No hope in sight. Couldn't pass the physical to go back because my back, neck, all that. Two and a half, three years ago, I decided to break out my paints again and try to make myself feel better. And then once I did that, I was getting denied by Social Security and all that. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I just start trying to sell some of these paintings and start trying to make a little money painting? And so, yeah, it wasn't even on my radar to be, uh, to work for a living, to make do art for a living. And I don't make great money now, but it's, you know, it's getting better. It's taking a long time. So what time is it there, um, Neil? Y'all see how much difference putting these darks in starts making? How that front starts getting some of that wet looking?
funny because I'm almost feeling lost in this picture right now but I know if I just keep working it it'll I'll get there y'all watching me over here just kind of flounder around a little bit <laughs> battle of the clocks over here. Heck, for all I know, you two lied to everybody. So a little bit of fuzzy look on the outside where I sprayed that blue in the background, but it, I intend to come in and just taking back some of the colors. I got a little bit too too much over spray back down over in that lip section right there. We still got a long ways to go if I want it to be real, Andrew. But it will be. Um, you know what I mean? It depends. Because, you know, here's the thing is this picture I'm just doing because I wanted to do something for a live stream that was pretty realistic. So I can take it as far as I want. I can go, you know, as far as I want with it. Or I can stop whenever I want because it really... You know, I have no specific goal in mind for it. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of a cool thing about it. And, you know, it's really odd for me, though, because I'm working this like, you know, I haven't been on with it in a few days. Usually when I start a painting, I will complete it within days. Um, my tolerance usually for having a painting laying around is about two days three days at the most and if I get a painting where it's sitting around for more than three days I usually I, I, I don't like it and it just it bugs me so once I start one I like to get through with them but in this particular case it's making me teach learn some patience too because you know I got my other projects to do so this isn't paying me anything so um, 
I mean, it's made me learn some patience. I had to put take take it off my easel because I had it on my easel. I had to take it off my easel and set it down so I wouldn't work on it when I wasn't on live stream because you know I intend to you know live stream this whole whole process on this one. And you know I can't really with live stream it's a little bit a uh, little bit different. I mean I don't go through a live stream and start explaining everything I'm doing. Of course, I'm always here for questions. Unlike a tutorial, you know, I would be talking quite a bit about the painting. Live streams are a little bit different in that you can learn a lot from a live stream. One of the things that's really cool about live streams is, you know, it helps you see an artist's process and realize it's not you know, this isn't stuff that's not done in a 20 minute like a YouTube tutorial, you know. And I've got some long tutorials that are a couple hours long. Um, but still, it really doesn't give you... I mean, I do some that are, you know, some paintings that are really quick. Um, but, you know, when you start talking about realism, in-depth realism, like we're going to get to in this one, you know, then... You know, it's a little bit of a different story. It really takes time. If you want the colors to be accurate, it takes time to mix the colors. It takes time to do all that stuff. See, there was a splatter. That's what happens when you grab the airbrush and don't test it. See, and I was about to brag on how great the clips can do in detail. I guess Jake must have booked out of here because I ain't heard him come back. He probably doesn't even know I'm giving him a shout out. Gonna do a little soft eraser right in here. And I'm not gonna, you know, and here's the thing, here's something to understand. I'm not coming back to white. All I'm doing, if y'all remember, I had some base color in here. So all I'm doing here is bringing this back and taking that darker shade that I put on there that I didn't want to get that far in and coming back and erasing out to that, erasing that darker shade off of the lighter shade. What you can do I gotta knock it I gotta not get distracted by that outside edge because I know the outside edge is messed up. It's fuzzy on the outside edge and I keep wanting to fix it, but I, I know I ain't gonna fix it until I put some glue on there. But it does need that little little definition right there. It's gotta be important in the overall look. I might need to pull out a detail airbrush. Get that in there. Oh yeah, I told Jake. He said he was gonna go take that house of color thing. He was gonna go take that class, and I was like, man, just tell you, 
You start down that path, them colors, I, I warned them that it, it, you'll want to paint every, you'll want to flake and do all that stuff and you'll want all the spray guns. It's an addiction. And uh, somebody just asked me that question, um, Andrew, and I was telling them, you know, I don't, I don't know that I have a preferred surface. Um, you know, I'll paint on anything, and it depends on what I'm doing. You know, I like Terra Slate a lot. I mean, that's what I'm painting on right now. I like Terra Slate a lot because it's it holds the paint really well. It works a lot like gesso. So far as paper surfaces go, there's no doubt I love Terra Slate because, like, I can still scratch and erase on it, but unlike Yupo, you know, I couldn't, I mean... You know, see how just my fingers, I'm not getting any scratches in there. Where if I was using Yupo or any of the other synthetic papers out there, that wouldn't happen. I mean, this would, if I started doing this, hitting it with my fingernails like that, it would scratch it. Um, whereas the Terra Slate holds it. With that said, you can't, you know, it's a little, uh, takes a little more work to erase on it. You have to push a little bit harder to get it to erase. But it's definitely one of my favorite surfaces working with illustration paints. Um, you know, and I also paint on metal panels and I paint on aluminum and, you know. But what you can see is I can erase and I can softly erase so I don't pull that paint back too far and just I don't have to just be careful as careful with it and you know that's one of the reasons I like it for you know for a synthetic paper surface it's probably oh it's no question for a synthetic paper it's my favorite there are certain things that are easier to do with Yupo or something like that you can definitely get a little um, better it's easier to pull out those little tiny details like you can use dials and stuff on it um whereas you really can't get away with that those super super tiny surfaces details so i do lack just a hair of detail capability versus working on a yupo but not that bad. I mean, realize that's, you know, we're, we're pretty small. I mean, this, I got some pretty tight detail in here. Yeah, keeping spray gunner in business, yeah. Well, I help, I help spray gunner stay in business too. I don't even know if they know my name. And, I've ordered through Spray Gunner under more than one name, so I've gotten a little better about that, but there's a reason for that, because I was going to review some stuff, and I wanted to be able to say, hey, you know, I got this stuff, you know, they're not giving me stuff, so, um, and I wanted to be able to say, hey, they can't can't cherry pick a sample and send it to me because people have accused people of, you know oh they sent you a hand picked sample stuff like that which just you know airbrush world is not really doesn't happen in the tech world that kind of crap happens all the time
too far that way. Right there. Fix this back eye. It needs to be looks like right about there when I get to that back eye and that needs to be orangish. So y'all tell me how far should I go with detail on this? Should I get crazy, crazy? Make this painting last for another couple of live streams or just run through it and get it done. I can do both. Well, I can't do both on the same picture. Three millimeter diameter piece of stainless steel. I figured I'd pull you guys back just a little bit. Probably just a little bit far in there. Refocus. Got a little detail in it. Three About ninety percent of it on this one is uh, all freehand techniques. So about ninety percent. I didn't say it's all freehand techniques. Don't don't use me a Lying now. Well, the funny thing about that, Andrew, is, you know, well is relevant, and, you know, I'm never going to get to that point, and I don't paint everything realistic, but, and I never want to get to that point where I start telling people that photorealistic art is better than other art, because that is just garbage. I mean, it really is. Um, you know, while, while realism and especially photorealism might get you, and that's the other thing about it, is, you know, all that stuff might get you a lot of likes from people, 
and I and, and I like good positive feedback, but I'm gonna tell you right now, at the end of the day, if it comes down to whether I'm gonna get 5,000 likes on Facebook or I'm gonna get a thousand dollars worth of commissions to do for my customers, what do you think I'm gonna pick? What do you think I want? Because ain't no likes been down there buying me no ribeye at the grocery store. Which I actually just went and bought some ribeyes at the grocery store. I may throw them on. One couple of them on. I don't know if y'all have the same problem as we do over here. Uh, any of my overseas people. Um... Where beef has been just crazy expensive. But, um, yes, yeah, so I went to the grocery store and I could get ribeyes cheaper than I could buy a beef roast. And it was almost just barely cheaper, barely more expensive than roast beef. They said if you buy a half, you know, a half, that's what I was to say, you had to buy a whole half ribeye which was like 10 pounds and i was like load that bad boy up my car man car we're gonna we're, we're gonna eat that i was like it's been a long time since i've been able to go buy steaks from the grocery store and you know uh, i was like we're gonna we're gonna throw some ribeyes down on the grill it's been a long time since i've been able to do that really So yeah, when I saw them ribeyes like that, I was like, oh yeah. Anybody old enough, well, my overseas followers don't know this, but you know that old saying, you know that old commercial, remember, remember the Wendy's commercial from way back in the day, where would you be? The old lady driving around in the car going crazy, doing all that stuff. Where's the beef? Maybe y'all haven't seen that. I don't know. I think I'm probably the only one old enough in here. Seeing more stuff needs to be. I'm trying to find my timer. Oh, I've been on for over an hour. I ain't getting jacked on, am I? I'm working on one little... See your name in the chat. Somebody was probably talking bad about you. Neil was talking crap about you, man. Me too.
<laughs> Come on, y'all y'all can tell the truth. Everybody was talking bad about me. I try to stick up for you a little bit, but after a while I just joined in on the fun. <laughs> I guess I start putting some of this darks in over here, but that's a really, that should be more of a bluish. I'll start working on the back section a little bit. That front start to look almost like a decent piece. I still got to get some color in here and then I can come back and I'm going to work this way and then we're going to tie this in together. Got to get a big dark splotch in there. I'm going to put this big dark, I think I'm going to work on this big dark stripe that belongs in here and that's going to be a lot of little freehand figure eight texture and going on there. It won't take very long because of the way that's laid out. Or at least it shouldn't take that long. I've already got a lot of that texture in there. Y'all saw me. Well, I guess I've lost it. What did I do with it? A little piece of poster board. I guess I've lost it. Let's see, I'm gonna have to make do with this. Yellow squish with eyes. Y'all just think we're getting close to really.
now y'all making fun of my picture. It's all right. I got something for y'all. I got something for y'all. I don't know if that made much difference looking at it on your screen or not. All I can tell you is it made a huge, it will make a huge difference in the end to me. get out one of my old-fashioned homemade Should I zoom back in on that again so y'all see what I'm doing? Oh, y'all talking trash. All right, all right, I got something for y'all. I got something for y'all. Air toad, air toad huh? instead of air top. Huh?
No, I'm not. I'm using a .35, just the standard Iwata clips running about 25 PSI. I didn't really feel a need to pull out a detail brush for this right now. Actually, I got two brushes sitting over here. I got my GSI Creos PS270 sitting on the easel, and I got this one sitting on my easel, and I just grabbed whichever one came first, and that's how I picked what brush I was using. Um, you know, that's people don't understand about a, a detail brush is it's not about how fine the line can get the only real need need to a detail brush is when you need to create really smooth blends at sizes like this when it comes to doing fine lines there's very very little you can't do with any decent quality, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.35 airbrush. If it's a decent quality airbrush, it, you should be able to get some pretty fine lines with I'm using the wrong airbrush. Listen to them. That's it. That's, that's it. I'm using the wrong airbrush. I could go... It's dirty as I'll get. I can go get my little $30 airbrush out and do the same thing. And if y'all notice, I'm not just laying color in. Notice that's all just... You see how I'm doing that? That's just little tiny, getting that texture like that, and getting that bit of realism I mean I'm not following my reference exactly that's just a bunch of super small figure eights and there's no reason anybody can't get to being able to do this stuff um, one, I would tell people how are you holding your how are you holding your trigger is important as well. I mean, Steve Leahy does almost all of his work with the Iwata Eclipse. Over ninety percent of his work is done with an Iwata Eclipse. So if he can get the kind of details that he runs, of course, I know he does some scratching and erasing stuff too. See, and these are even super small, not heavy lines. The best airbrush I had, you know, I'm not going to say my Creoses are not good airbrushes. They are. If Team Creos, if your friends over at the, at the Creos place want to send me one of all of their airbrushes and talk about a few bucks and sponsor me, I'll never use another airbrush again because I won't need to. I mean, they're great airbrushes. But at the same time, I'm not going to just abandon the brushes I already have to go buy new ones. I mean, you know, the texture templates are great for laying out stuff really fast. And this is, if you saw my freehand textures video, that's exactly what I'm doing, is using this freehand texture. But understand you won't get there overnight. It took a while. 
and you're going to have to practice it. I practice, and I'm not reduced as much as, you know, people always ask how much am I reducing. This is probably 10%, maybe 20% reducer, and that's with Createx Illustration. If I was using Wicked, I would probably be reducing about three parts of reducer to one part of paint. And if I was using Createx Standard, I would just go ahead and try to, I would just go ahead and throw it out because there's no way I would get this done with this airbrush at this level with Standard Createx without hating myself. Not that small. I mean, we're talking you know, this is this is really small. Um, but see, even you know, I can do those gentle shades and blends with it too. So. said you won't get there right away yeah I mean I love my wild eclipse I can you know it's it's just a super versatile brush no frills it's easy to keep it you know it's easy to clean it's easy to do stuff with you know it, it's absolutely by far I mean and I like a lot of you know I have no problem with any Iwata brush I've ever owned but by far the Awada Eclipse is by far my favorite airbrush that Awada has. And it's the one brush that nobody, I feel, has a brush exactly like it and that could replace the Eclipse if you wanted that exact brush. I don't think anybody's got one. And I don't think there's really a, a brush that's, ex you know, if you're looking for that exact brush, there's no, nobody else has got something that's equivalent. Um, not saying people don't have brushes that are as good. I'm just saying the things that make the Eclipse unique are, you know, nobody else has it. Because there's other brushes with removable nozzles, like, you know, compression fit nozzles and stuff. But they're not the same brush, you know, from the standpoint of how big is it, how does it fit in your hand, all of that stuff. It is a very, only that airbrush is like it. There's no other, there's no other brush like it out there. It's still one of my go-to airbrushes. I use it a lot. You know, sometimes I'll put it down for a while. <clears throat> but you know, anyway, back on that where he was talking about those texture templates. I mean, I used them in there, so it's not like I don't, you know, I don't. I'll use anything that gets the picture done. Why do I freehand a lot of stuff? Well, because I can. And it's quicker and easier for me to do that. And sometimes templates, texture templates, don't get exactly what you want, you know. So you got to be careful using those because, you know, you, you get the dot pattern that they give you. It's like if, if anybody was in here the other day, they saw that I actually took... For a lot of these dots down here, I took a piece of poster board, stuck it thumbtack through it to paint to do some of those micro fine dots. And the reason I did that is because if I used any of my texture shields that were bought, they are wide, and I was able to put a nice, neat pattern in here without worrying about getting any overspray in places I didn't want it. So making your own stuff up. You know, that's just another, just another skill.
what time is it going to be? 4.43. No, Creos is not an expensive airbrush. They're very reasonably priced airbrushes, and they're very good quality. Got nothing against them. I've got, you know, this one right here. Stays on my easel most of the time. So anyway, I was thinking about changing my my channel name to an airbrush related channel name. Y'all got any um, suggestions? For that that's not already used and taken I don't know and you know I'm torn between that because I later on life I was thinking maybe a couple years down the road I would get into some other art and stuff on the channel um, that I dabble with a little bit of drawing techniques tips um, you know Maybe when I get into digital, more digital art, after I get a year or two under my belt, I might show some stuff on that. Um, no, Neil, I mean, they're, they're, parts of them are interchangeable with a lot of, some things are. All the platinum, and of course the PS770 and the PS771, which is by far the best value Micron airbrush out there right now. But the platinum, like I can take this head off on the platinum series, which is the PS270. I can take this head off and my micron head screws right on there. Y'all told me to go full blown realism, so I'm taking a lot of time. Well, if you're going to go take a look at the Creos, go check out my video on it and purchase through my link. You know. I have a review on the 270 when I first bought it. So if you're going to purchase one, purchase it through my link. It's through Amazon, but it actually purchases through Spray Gunner anyway, so... Spray Gunner still makes the money. Yeah. I mean, I was in here earlier today, and I was like, you know what? Of course, I was sitting there with my airbrushes that I just left paint in them last night and all that. I just, all I did was spray a quick spray of water through them. You know, all the stuff you're not supposed to do. And, um... And I was thinking when I did that, talking about that channel name, I was like, maybe I'll just call it Dirty Airbrushing. But then I didn't know if people would take that wrong. Dirty Airbrush. Which would be really, really fitting. It's taken me a long time, it's y'all's fault, because y'all told me to go ahead and get really realistic with this thing and not rush through it. So that means I'm going to have to have another live feed of me working on this thing.
Are yours Amazon links, Jake? Freaking poacher. Be poaching my purchases. Man, I'm poor, dude. I already sent people over to your page. What else you want? That's what friends are for, and then. Nah, I'm just giving Jake crap. <clears throat> you know what's funny about that, Jake? I, is yours an Amazon link, Jake? I'll tell you a little secret about that. That it, that might as annoying as all get out. that the commission percentage on an Iwata airbrush is over double than what the commission percentage is on the Creos because it's listed as a different category for some reason. The Creos is listed as hobbies, which is one of the lowest performing category percentage of pay. In other words, it pays like two dollars. Two dollars and change is what it pays. Two percent is what they pay if I sell Creos on through Amazon. Not that I'm complaining about two bucks. But somebody went and purchased an Eclipse off my site and made, and uh, when I saw it, I made uh, a lot more. Like, it was like $10. So yeah, I'm not sure. I know that different different things sell at different commissions. You get different commissions depending on what category it's listed at. I'm not sure which one Creos is listed at. Most, yeah, a lot of my stuff is 2%. Yeah, it's not a con. Well, yes and no. I mean, I'm not, you know, how do I put this? Because they are very, very, very specific about what you have to say. I have links, affiliate links available through my Amazon and I get paid a commission if people purchase through my affiliate links. However, I am not affiliated with Amazon nor employed by in any way and I think that's what I have to say say pretty much so and they're pretty strict about it but you know I mean it's it's stop and think about I was telling Allie the other day and I don't get a lot yeah they canceled my Spain because I didn't meet enough sales. 
That's all right, bro. You probably should be, you know, don't get too hurried because you know what they did to me the first time, right? I made three sales, so they reviewed my site after I made three sales, and then they kicked me out of the program because I did not have 500 followers on my YouTube. So I had to reapply. So I was kicked out of the program the first time. And I didn't get paid for those three sales, I don't believe. I may have been. I don't believe so. It wouldn't have been much money anyway. Now I make I ain't made twenty dollars this month at all. This month so far, so my best Amazon month since I've been doing it. And uh, my best month on on Amazon has been about a hundred bucks, but most of them have not been man. Hey, I don't. I appreciate you you, you supporting. I appreciate the Patreon thing. Lots of tiny little details I've been been, cat, been stuck into. So it looks like I didn't get anything done today, doesn't it? I haven't done much on here. So y'all tell me, what is the time frame or y'all message me or those of you on patreon tell me what's the best time frame for the next live stream so i'm gonna have to get off here and go cook some dinner my wife will be heading home here shortly so yeah i need to know when the best time people want for live streaming is um you know, and I, what I'm going to do is find that happy medium over time, and I'll still switch them up by a couple of hours one way or the other, but I definitely want to find when, when it's most beneficial to people. I mean, live streams aren't going to generate the same views as a tutorial. The tutorials are always going to outperform it in total views because people can watch them whenever they want and usually people don't come back and watch a whole lot of live stream stuff could be wrong unless people start super chatting me or something and then in which case I'd start making money I don't know I've never never seen how super chat works yet I mean I'm a, I just turned it on The ironing done. Oh, it's so funny. So funny. Yeah, I don't iron jack. Get the ironing done. Funny guy, funny guy. So yeah, believe it or not, we got a long ways to go before that puppy will be done if we're going to go for that total realism thing. Um, I can, the back's not that difficult, so I could probably knock out in one more, one more live stream, I could probably knock out all of this back, all this shadowing in here, and get all the coloring in here and off of the belly. I probably can get it, and then I'll have just a little bit of touch-up to do from there. So, 
another two hours yeah another two hours I can probably knock out the whole back and get everything done except for like I said I'm gonna mask this off and then I'm gonna respray the background to take care of any overspray and stuff that way that's gonna be the easiest easiest solution for me yeah two hour live shows Andrews midnight on what time zone Twenty one hundred Spain or Spanish? You're in Spain, not sp actual Spain. Is that correct, Paul? But yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this is tutorial. I mean, like I said, it's a little bit different. Tutorials are a little different than, um, you know, live streams. But live streams allow you to see a lot of things that you wouldn't necessarily see in tutorials. See all the mistakes you make. See everything going on with it. So, um, yep, Paul is in Spain. So... Yeah, I got people, heck, I think I got more out-of-country people, uh, more out-of-the-United-States people in here today than I do in the United States. So, and that that's the downside. I mean, this time, this is the time that most of the United, or most of central, the middle part of the United States, down to Florida and stuff, people are just getting off work, just getting ready to head home. Um, it's 5 o'clock my time. Uh, so the East Coast is an hour, so 6 o'clock on the East Coast, depending on where you're at, except Florida. I think New York's two hours ahead, so I think it's 7 o'clock in New York. Um, I'm not positive about that. Well, we'll definitely keep, uh, you know, definitely keep some stuff going there. Of course, if you guys have got any questions, I'm going to stay off about um, to answer questions right now. I'm going to stop painting, of course, I already have. But any questions, I'm going to stay on for a full two hours. So that's three and a half minutes left. And y'all have to forgive me my bad habit. I'm going to light me a cigarette. Oh yeah, I mean, when it comes to live streams, it's just, you know, like I said, I'll move them around a little bit, but I want to get a kind of feel where what works for everybody best. You know, it's not like I ever expect to have, you know, hundreds of people in a live stream. I mean, you look at, I mean, an airbrush channel is just not going to have that kind of pull. Um, I mean, heck, you know, Lisa Lockery from Lockery Fine Art. Now, I did see her pull in a huge number one afternoon when COVID was really rampant and everybody was home and she did one at like noon. But I mean, you look at how popular she is. She's got over 250,000 subscribers. She's been around for years and years and she still only runs a couple of hundred people in her channel. And uh, so, yeah, I never expect to have that kind of number. I would be thrilled if I ever saw... 75 to 100 people in a chat in a channel at one time i would be absolutely thrilled that'd be awesome clean plastic before painting on it which plastic you talking about i wipe all of my plastics down with alcohol rubbing plain old rubbing alcohol is what I wipe all of my plastics down before I paint on them pretty much. Reducer can do a pretty good job too, but alcohol is absolutely, leaves absolutely zero residue and cleans all oils and fingerprints and stuff like that off of your plastics. So as a matter of fact, I'm not the only person that does that. Simon Murray, I know Simon Murray wipes his down with rubbing alcohol.
Well, I'll put in there, you know, in my, I'm going to start like I did today. Um, you know, it'll say what time and what day I'm coming on, and it'll have a thing, so you'll know, so you'll be able to, to convert from Central Standard Time. Number 19 in the Patriot list. What's, what's the Patriot list? Oh, Patreon, you mean. Oh, yeah, she's a big timer and patron. Lisa pulls in eight, almost about eight grand a month off a of patron. But she's been doing this for a really long time, and she does a lot. I mean, um, her Patreon channel has a lot of stuff. You know, she's got so many videos because she's been doing it so long. She's got hundreds of videos on Patreon. So, because she started out, what she was doing was converting all her like five-minute tutorials. She would do hour-long versions, and she'd put them on Patreon. She'd do five-minute versions on YouTube. I do scotch bright, bright most of my plastics. When it comes to plastics, you got to be careful because there are different types of plastic, and, and um, most plastics are, you know, they're, they're, I'm gonna have to do a video about it because people get so confused about what to do and what not to do in plastic and I know guys that are automotive body guys that still get it wrong and have no idea I don't think some of these guys I don't know what in the world they're teaching them but some of these guys just still get plastics all wrong like HDPE is notoriously hard and the only the only proper solution for HDP to paint on is to do either get Corona, either get Corona discharge applied to it, or flame treat the HDP ahead of time, which creates not only does it bring out the mold release, but it also creates an electrostatic charge to it, so it makes it actually attract things to it, which means it'll attract a heck of a lot of dust. So polycarbonate's not hard. The one thing I would say about the UVLS, though, is um, you can't spray that with a small airbrush. If you thin it down too much, it loses a whole lot of that, that ability, so you don't be spraying it with a small airbrush. Really, preferably, you spray it with at least a minigun on the UVLS. So that stuff's pretty thick. Although, if you've ever sprayed, hey, I don't even know if you've sprayed the Scenics brush, but the Scenics is ridiculous thick. It is the thickest out of the stuff. Man, that's some thick stuff to spray. The Scenics is really, really thick. It's, it's thicker than the UVLS. But for most plastics, most plastics, I use Audubon Sealer. Never, ever, ever had a problem with most plastics. For automotive style plastics and stuff like that, I use Audubon Sealer. I have been for a long time. Um, and that's what I prefer. You know, that's my, my preferred go-to. And the reason that I prefer the Audubon is one, I'm color keying, so I can get my color key in there. And, you know, it's a little bit thinner than the, than the UVLS. And you know the UVLS is, is quite a bit more expensive too, so um, you know for most things like aluminum, aluminum's great with the Audubon. I use transparent sealer on aluminum. Um, most of my plastics I use the Audubon sealer with. There are a few things that are there's better solutions for than, but not too many things that you can't use the Audubon for. Of course, you can't go direct to metal, and that's you know the UVLS is direct to metal, but I'm really not. 100% sold on the idea of that as a direct to metal. Like, I wouldn't be able to use that on as a direct to metal clear for, I would be a little nervous doing it on a gas tank, a motorcycle gas tank. And the reason why is I know a lot, I've had a lot of gas spilled on tanks. And, um,
the track the autoborn transparent 6000 are you talking about still lifting on your autoborn transparent I've got UBLS here. It's not like I don't use it. Um, I've got UBLS. I've got the Scenix. I've got lots of Audubon. All of that stuff. And and then like on my canvases, I use and some of my interior stuff. I use the 5620. So which is a pretty durable product itself. I haven't tried the UVLS on glass. I guess I'm going to have to try it. I have her on the Scenics on glass. I just can't see the UVLS being... I just can't wrap my head around the UVLS having more adhesion than the Scenics. Because when I tested the UVLS on stainless, I had much better adhesion on stainless steel with the Scenics by far. I mean, it wasn't even close. And actually... If you spray, if you start thinning out the UVLS a lot, I had some issues with it not passing a cross touch on, on the on the stainless steel where, you know, I even had Audubon pass the cross test because I can thin the Audubon down more. So, yeah, 6000 is an awesome product. Any of the Audubon sealers are awesome. And, and for price-wise, price Audubon sealer is really tough to beat. For what it can do and it get through most things and i mean it depends on how much stuff you're doing um you know of course you know to have a little bit of uvls if you're not spraying a lot of stuff you know to have a little bit of uvls no problem you start spraying a lot like brush strokes spray a lot now of course he's doing a lot of direct metal which is the only product that createx has that is direct to a regular metal so you know you, you, it's the only product they have that is listed as direct to metal. So you now I ran the UVLS when I first got it. I took the UVLS and sprayed stainless. Now I'd say probably in my case with the stainless was I only let it set for a few hours and UVLS I think takes longer to cure out. But I mean, I've never had a problem with Audubon lifting on stainless steel. And um, and the Scenics, you know, I mean, well, the Scenics, the, the, the good side of the Scenics is, of course, you know, it's catalyzed, so it's cured. I mean, it, it cures out really fast. But, and the Scenics is, ironically, the gloss Scenics, for some reason, is more expensive than the matte and the satin. As a matter of fact, I was shocked because the other day I was able to get a quart of Scenix SSR and I don't remember what I paid for the additive, but I was able to get a quart of satin the other day for like 35 bucks. And I was like, that, I couldn't pass it up. I, it was on Spray Gunner for that. So I don't know if they're just not selling a lot of the matte and the satin, you know, and they're just keeping the price down because they're not selling a lot of it, whereas the gloss was 60 something dollars. So, yeah. But yeah, the UVLS, you know, for the most part, I had, you know, no issues with it. The only thing I would say is, you know, when I did the stainless test, but I hadn't let it cure out like you're supposed to. So, not following the tech sheet, you know, I can't. Of course, you know, the, the certain products I'm going to use because I've already got them and I've got them in quantity anyway. But hopefully they came down on the UVLS price a little bit. Because I was like, man, that's, I was like, that's pricey. I was like, it's it's pretty pricey. Hey, baby. I'm just fixing to get off here. We're wrapping up. So I will see you when you get home. I'm going to 
go in there in a second and do the ironing, as Neil told me. Yeah, 68 for 32 ounces. I thought when they came out, I was like, man, that's. I was like, that's that's expensive. And like you said, it's like, man, that's more than I'm paying for 2K clear coat. That's like crazy. Alright guys, well I'm going to get off here too. I appreciate y'all stopping by. I'm going to get off here and we'll get back. I will make another plan for I'll maybe maybe do it over the week. Maybe get back on on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Neil told me I was talking about cooking dinner. He asked me if I did the ironing too, baby. Um, jokester. I mean, you know, he's already been up in your DM, so of course he's going to give me crap. Trying to hit on my woman. So, y'all have a great night. I'm gonna get out of here, and I will see y'all. I'll make a, I'll, I'll make another plan. We'll come back and get the next two hours in on this thing, and yeah, get this thing really lively on the back end. We'll get it, we'll get it realistic. So, y'all have a good one.